Alright, welcome back to Making a Dandelion in Maya, um, part 2. Previously we were at ZBrush and we click GoZ so that it um, brings our mesh back here into Maya with everything hooked up for us. So um, let's ignore the background for now. We have the leaves, the stem, the bud and the seed. Okay, if we take a look at Hypershade, okay, they are all hooked up in uh, using the material blend. Okay, but actually the only reason why we want to use Gozi is not because we want it to hook up um, the shading network for us. It's, bec it's actually because we want to use um, we want to make sure that um, things like displacement map works. And why did I say that? If you take a look at um, your displacement map under the um, the texture node for displacement, you'll find under color balance, alpha gain and alpha offset has a value. And these are actually generated from ZBrush when you click Go Z. And it's a different value when you bring it to a different package. So for ZBrush to Maya, it will give you a value. So this is actually the value that I want out of ZBrush when I use this method to bring it back to Maya. So for my materials, I actually prefer Material X to work better with my mental ray um, setup. So, in order to do that, we will have to hook up, um, rehook up our sh uh, shading network so that we are using uh, MIA Material X. So, to do that, we will do it manually by going to Create, Mental Ray Materials, MIA Material X, or I use passes just in case I want to output the passes later on. So for color, you just need to minimize drag, you put it into the color, or you can just click this, minimize drag over to color, drop it here, and it's hooked up. Okay. So for bump map, which is the normal map, we will be putting it over here in bump, under standard bump. So we have middle mouse drag, release it here, and it's hooked up. As for displacement map, it is actually in the shading group, so we will have to go to the shading group, middle mouse drag the displacement shader to the displacement material of the shading group. And that's it, we have hooked up our material. And all we have to do now is to Select the mesh, right click, assign material to selection, and it's replaced by material X. Okay, what I like to do is quite an important step is to rename your, your shaders so that they are clean and organized. So I'll call it leaves MIA. I'll call the shading group leaves MIA SG. And I'll also rename my texture files so that it's easy to troubleshoot if there's anything wrong. So normal map will be leaves underscore normal map. Okay. You can just call, call this a bum 2D because it's a bum 2D node. As for things like um, the place 2D texture I like to keep it efficient and clean by removing un, uh, duplicates of uh, the same kind of tex uh, texture node. So basically, we can delete away everything except one, and we just need to ho hook it up by middle mouse dragging, release, default. Because essentially, these three um, texture nodes are using the same place 2D texture. They are using the same um, repeat UV offset and everything. So you could technically hook up the same node to the three texture nodes that you are using. Okay, and then uh, later on, what I like to do is to delete unused nodes so we don't see the old nodes. And this will keep our um, hypershade clean and uh, help our rendering more efficient. Alright, I will now show you what's the final 
uh, when I finally hook up everything. Alright guys, here we are with the final hookup. Okay, this is the butt material. Butt MIA. Okay, we have the um, normal mat plugged into the standard bump. Okay, as for texture mat, I actually uh, hook it into a gamma correct node because I'm using a linear workflow. Okay, if you don't know what's a linear workflow, go Google it. It is easily one um, tutorial by itself because it's not easy to understand. But um, basically, if you are using um, under render settings, if you are using a default input profile of linear sRGB, you would want to actually gamma down your texture nodes before you plug them in to the color. Alternatively, you could set to use sRGB over here. That's an alternative method. But what I did was to simply just use a gamma gamma uh, correct node to gamma it down to the right um, uh, value. Okay, as an um, also as an additional step, I used um, some translucency to have the whole plant um, look a little bit better. Okay, this is um, you can only know this uh, during the rendering phase, but um, this is what uh, I did. Okay, I multiply it by four and plug it into the color of the translucency node. Okay, this technique is um, learned through the Nomon workshop um, by Alex Alvarez when he showed us how to do a forest. Um, basically, he used a multiply divide node. Okay, multiply the va uh, color values by 4 and hook it up into the color of the translucency so that you can have a very nice subtle um, translucent look to your um, leaves and plants okay so let's take a look at our leaves same setup okay gum, uh, the texture node is gamma corrected and plugged into the color uh, color attribute okay the same for a normal map into standard bump okay so same for the seats as well as the stand all right okay so that's all for the um, material setup now I'm going to show you how to do the fur for the seat all right guys um, you must be wondering right now why I you I just built one seat and not um, um, just uh, model all the seats okay simply because it takes so much time to model every seat and I don't want to do that I just want to use particles to help me so now my method for making the dandelion is um, the method is very simple but the execution does take a bit of um, technical knowledge okay what I did was to um, apply fur on each seat and then what I did was to uh, make uh, four different seats okay with, with different types of fur so I have a bit of variation um, between this uh, the fur of these seeds so that they can look a little bit more natural when you plant them um, all on the on the bud of the flower so um, I will cover this on, on how to um, initialize them on the bud itself later on but right now let me show you how to do the fur okay before um, we use fur we have to make sure that under window settings preferences plugin manager fur.mll is loaded all right okay after this okay we will now let's uh, look at this uh, one of these okay the front remember I was talking about the front cap Okay, that is where we plant our um, our fur. So, okay, I basically what I did was to 
select the faces of the front cap okay essentially we only need this for okay we will go to edit mesh duplicate face okay so when we do duplicate out the faces okay we will get something like this as a separate mesh over here you could subdivide this you could um, add more edge loops it's up to you so that the fur is has better um, uh, plant uh, better on your on your surface or you could just leave it alone Okay, remember to delete history before you plant your fur so that we can keep the history clean and then what we need to do now is to select the uh, what I call this a uh, cap the fur cap okay under rendering fur we will attach a new fur description all right okay let's say we have already done this Okay, we will get a fur feedback note and a fur uh, description note. So, okay, for my first seat, okay, we do have a fur feedback note, which is the transform note. Okay, this is the transform note. Well, this is the note that is controlling the. Um, this is the shape note, and we have a description note. Okay, the main part uh, that we want to be editing would be the under the description node. This is where you have all the uh, settings to make it look right. Okay, uh, what I suggest is to start with a preset. Okay, for me, I've already figured out my um, dandelion and saved it as a preset. But um, let's say if you are doing your own dandelion and you want to um, go through the process of making it look right, you could start with something that's similar, like um, let's say, let's say llama or something. Okay, something that uh, represents uh, the fur on the dandelion. Okay, when after you click it, it will load the settings for you, and you can start uh, editing from there. Right now, I will show you what my settings are. Okay, I use ambient diffuse and specular. Okay, my density is set to twenty two. Okay, um, for base and tip color, I just use um, white, um, but it's not pure white, it's kind of um, slightly um, close to white, but still not um, pure white for the colors. Okay, so, but you can always test this in the rendering phase, you don't have to worry about it right now. Okay, um, important uh, attributes to take note of will be the length okay the length will constitute how, how long the fur is going to be okay for me I use 3.2 and there's one more that I want to show you on how to get um, how to get the dandelion and that will be the base and tip curl okay these two values will determine um, we actually control the fur so that it looks like um, a dandelion. If you take a look at your reference images, you'll notice that it curls um, slightly away from the um, from the roots. So the settings that are found to be uh, working for me will be something near 0 0.3 and 0 0.4. All right. So you can test this uh, yourself. Okay. As for the rest, I left it alone. Okay, the number of segments I use 20 so that uh, we can have a nice um, curve to the uh, fur. Okay, under details we can even uh, control all this using maps and stuff but um, I didn't do that because uh, this is roughly um, already what I want. Um, for me, I added a little bit of noise to the length. Very, very tiny bit so that we don't have a very uh, uniform length of um, fur that is coming out so it's more natural so if you take a look at it from the front view some are shorter some are longer but they don't differ too much and that's how a dandelion seed looks like alright you can continue to play with all these values ok 
Okay, but uh, this is essentially how my I set up my fur. Now, if if we take a look at the fur uh, outliner, we will find the fur feedback node. Okay, what I like to do is to leave it in world space. Okay, the reason why you want to do that is, let's say if you are, um, if you are moving your seat. Okay, you don't actually want to move the fur feedback node at the same time. Okay, so let's say I move my seat, it's moving together, but because fur feedback has a transform node as well, so you don't want to double translate it. So that's why it's best to leave it in world space. That's one thing to take note. Okay, the other thing um, that I want to show you with regards to fur is I actually use the method um, to plug a shader into the fur okay, you can find this um, over at um, okay, if you take a look at my blog you can find this uh, if you search for fur you can find this Maya hand and fur shader uh, that's what I use basically you just need to um, input this to um, in the script editor in the transform node of the fur which I showed you just now okay so so let's say um, we, has, we have the fur selected okay if we for me I save it on the shelf okay which is to shade fur okay uh, all you need to do is to cl click this and you actually have um, you are able to export this um, material as a, so that it can be controlled by the shader and you don't have to rely on Maya's native um, fur rendering which is not um, not always uh, looking very good okay so sometimes we want to use a better shader for our application but this is an optional step you can still run away uh, without doing it like I did in my final product, I did not actually use a uh, shader for this, and it still looks um, alright for me because um, you can always go into post and uh, color correct it. Okay, right now I'm going to show you um, the stem. Okay, the stem is essentially rigged uh, by using um, about 10 um, joints. Okay. I believe um, most of you already know how to rig so all you have to do is to um, create the joints for the stem and just skin it by going to by selecting your joints selecting your stem okay going to animation skin bind skin smooth bind okay this will skin your joints to the stem and for the um for the animation i use the ik handle to animate this um to animate my dandelion so what i did was to go to the first my first joint okay you can use um the ik handle by this method just click ik handle select the first joint select the last joint and it will create a IK handler for you right here and this is where you can move your um, move your stem and animate it of course you can always animate this by using FK by animating your joints it's completely up to you for me um, I'm using this uh, IK handler method to animate the bobbing up and down of the um, stem Alright, so in the next uh, part, I will show you the simulation of the dandelion clock.